which is nice. Hi, Flora. Hi. So Hello. good to see you and meet you. Woohoo! You and meet you as well. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, so welcome to the Creative Soul Society. We have some beautiful members here today hanging out with us. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting you on gallery so I can see you all. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So I figure we could just kind of jump on in and I'll do a little introduction and, um, and then we can start our interview. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, perfect. All right. So Flora Boley is an artist, author, and gentle guide whose soulful approach to the creative process has touched thousands of lives blending over 20 years of professional painting experience with her background as a yoga instructor, healer, and lifelong truth seeker, Flora's intimate in-person workshops and popular online courses have empowered a global network of brave painters while creating a new holistic movement in the intuitive art world. More recently, Flora's creative passions have led her to explore the vast ways in which the principles of creativity can serve as fuel for a more alive and awakened living in the world. So no paintbrush is required. So curious about that. So Flora has a new book being released this month. Very exciting. I can't wait to read it. The Art of Aliveness, which I ordered, but I haven't received yet. Um, so looking forward to that. And I'm excited to hear more um, about that. So just to let you know, I first found out about you um, when I read this book, Art Inc. Oh, yeah. many moons ago. And I've been following you and your, your journey ever since. And um, my, my biggest impression has been that, oh, sorry, is um, your heart-centered approach to your global community. Sorry, my dog. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, so I'm really hoping that we could focus this interview um, about the heart chakra and um, looking about how you've created your relationships and connected with others on that frequency of love and how you've been able to expand in such a way, like in a global community is, is amazing because you know, your work is such medicine in this world. Mm -hmm. So um, I was hoping that we could talk about that and also about how like the challenges that come up, especially in that heart space of like when it can get imbalanced of um, like, you know, losses in relationships, such as griefs or resentments and, you know, em embracing all of the good feelings and the not so good feelings. And just knowing that that's just a part of being alive, right? Of, of experiencing all of that. So yeah. I'm excited to dive in. And <laughs> um, my first question for you is if you could just kind of start off um, and just letting everybody know maybe about like the beginning of your artistic journey, like as an artist and as an entrepreneur and kind of like, what was that like for you starting off? Sure, well, just, I wanna just thank you all for having me. It's really nice to be here with you. Um, so I definitely am one of those people that has always done art. You know, it was sort of my thing as a kid that was most natural and, and gave me the most happiness. <laughs> so I was thankfully, you know, born into a family that encouraged that and um, was supported in those ways. And so, and as far as the entrepreneur piece goes, I also, you know, I was like the little kid trying to sell you like some weird pot that I made out of the dirt in my backyard, you know, or like seaweed jewelry that I made from the water, you know, just I was always like, oh my gosh, like I could make something and sell it. How, what a neat thing. And so I thankfully never had a lot of big blocks around the, you know, the commerce piece of taking the creativity and then, and turning it into that. I always just thought, what a, what a wonderful thing if you're able to do that. And so um, I never, I will say, I never thought, I never really grew up as many of us didn't um, with the paradigm thinking I could be a professional artist. That, that was something I thought was reserved for like 10 people in the world. You know, um, it just didn't seem uh, realistic. And so I went to college, um, got into an art program, thinking I would be an interior designer or a graphic designer or art teacher, which is kind of what I ended up being. Um, 
but you know, it was, it was, I think my second year of college that I discovered really went into painting. And then I had a little, I had a little show at a coffee shop in my little college town and I sold a couple paintings and I'm also very practical. I'm from the Midwest and I'm always just, I've always been really practical with things like money and time and what makes sense. And so here I was being like a barista making $10 an hour. And then I sold these paintings and made some money. And I thought, well, maybe I could actually, maybe I could actually sell paintings for a living. And so I got that in my head. And then it was just like, that was the goal for many, many years. And I was just showing my work in any place that would have me like I was not picky it was you know hair salons and coffee shops and eventually galleries and that whole world but it, you know humble beginnings for sure I was out on the street doing art walks and all of that um and so then fast forward you know about 15 more years of, of that and along the way I became a yoga teacher and a massage therapist so I was sort of supporting the art dream with some of those and I was a waitress forever. So, you know, I had other gigs um, to make, to pay the bills. Um, and then I did eventually become a full-time painter, which was an interesting thing because that was forever my goal. And then when I got there, I was kind of lonely. I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but I was, I realized, oh, wow. Like what, what being a full-time painter means is is being in your studio alone all day long. And I'm such a people person and a, a real community person that that was an interesting realization. Um, and so then I was sitting with, well, if that's not my dream job, what what is? And so I went on a real soul searching mission for about a year, talked to a lot of people. And a friend of mine actually said, well, what about teaching painting? which I'd never thought, I'd never thought of that before, which is so crazy to me now. I'm like, how did I never think of that? But anyways, it was like, like her saying it was the first time. I also didn't realize art workshops and all of that was really a thing. I was sort of living under my own little rock. And so I said, oh, that's an interesting idea. And then sort of one thing led to the next and I got invited to teach at a um, you know, a art retreat. And then it really just, you know, it was like within, hours of being there and sharing my process with other people, I realized this is what I want to be doing. Like, this is so much more satisfying to me than my own painting process. I was at that point, I still love to paint and I, I'm sure I would imagine I always will, but, but seeing other people kind of wake up to their creativity was just like, you know, beautiful thing for me. And so then I think the universe just supported you know, what I was feeling excited about and what people were feeling excited about. And so it just sort of, I got asked to write a book about 10 days later after that first retreat, because there had been like a author scout person at the retreat. So, you know, it was like very much a swirl in that direction as after that first time I taught and then I've uh, been doing it ever since I've been, I've been teaching and uh, writing and painting myself still, but really enjoying the, um, the sharing of it, you know, and, and that just never really gets old to me. I'm like you mentioned in the intro, um, I'm kind of switching gears a bit right now, um, away from having it, you know, having the painting be such the focus, um, because what I've really learned through the last decade of sharing this process is that, Painting is one vehicle um, that we can, you know, use, but that that the create that creativity is this much bigger thing, and uh, the transformational uh, potential is there. With a, there's a lot of different ways you can access that, and so I've really been like going deep into that world, and so I I, I love to use music and movement and writing and visualization, um, connect, you know, just authentic connection with other people, like all of this supports the creative process, which then supports how we show up in the world. And so that's what my new book's about. And that's what my, you know, once the world opens up again and retreats and things are happening, that's what I uh, plan to be sharing is more of the art of aliveness um, curriculum that I'm working with now. 
That's really beautiful. And I like that you allowed yourself to experiment and try different things. And then you found like what, you know, brought that aliveness to you. And you just went with that. You're like, okay, well, maybe I need to try this. And you're like, yeah, that feels good. I'm, you know, you're feeding off that energy with, with, with people, right? You're building that momentum. So that's really beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Um, I know you've had a lot of amazing experiences um, along your path and, and, and made some really um, great connections. I'm, I'm curious, what was that like for you? Like, like what are some like touch tones like going along your, your journey that, that just kind of like, wow, that was just amazing. Cause I know you've been to like Bali, you've done retreats there, you've done some different things. What are some things like some highlights that are really well, what, you know, I mentioned, so I showed up at that first retreat and that was in New Hampshire. It was called Squam. I don't know if anyone ever went to that, but it was this beautiful retreat with about, I don't know, 200 or 300 participants and this whole um, crew of teachers. And when I showed up there, and realize that this is a thing that is happening where people are coming together and, and doing all these different creative practices. That was a real eye opener for me. Um, so that was like, wow, okay, this, I love that this is a thing. And then that, um, you know, that turned into me doing these retreats all over the, you know, the world because I would get these invitations from people that would say, hey, like, do you wanna come to Australia and teach your painting thing? And I just, for the first year or so after I discovered teaching, I just said yes to everything. <laughs> I was like, sure, yes, yes. And so I found myself all, like traveling extensively um, actually. And that was really beautiful to be able, I've, I always love, I've been a traveler my whole life and I love that. And so to be able to show up in a place and have a purpose and be connected to people is ideal. You know, that's such a fun way to travel and make money. You know, I was like, great, this is, this is working for me. Um, and so, yeah, eventually I started teaching in Bali, which has been a place that I've just personally had a connection to for quite a while. Um, and th those have been highlights for sure. The, the Bali retreats is just to be able to bring people to a place that I love so much and to, and a place that is so, um, you know, their whole culture is, it's about beauty and reverence and devotion and art. So it's like, what a amazing background. Um, and something I love about those retreats is that we'd get people from all over the world would come together. And so it was like, they got to meet each other, which ends up being, you know, oftentimes the biggest takeaway or the, or the biggest thing that people get from the retreats are just these connections to each other. You know, the painting is almost secondary. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I always love, I love connecting people. That's just something that makes me really happy, gives me energy. So, and then I've, you know, over the years I've had, um, I feel very, very grateful and lucky to have a really strong community of creative um, friends and collaborators. And, you know, I have a, a group of women and we get together a couple times a year where we just come together. We, we're all um, entrepreneurs. We, we all have creative businesses and we just spend like four or five days together um, supporting each other. And each person gets, you know, a certain amount of time where everyone else focuses on them and we all know each other really well. And so it's like to have that kind of support and, and peer connection is something that, um, I just treasure, you know, I, I treasure that. Um, and there's no competition. It's like the opposite of competition. You know, we're all just cheering each other on supporting each other, finding little ways to collaborate. And I love that. I think that's the future. You know, I think that's where we it's need to be going. It's a blue ocean. There's no, it's not like a, like a red bloody ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So the next question, I'm curious about what challenges or obstacles have come along the way. Cause it sounds like you've had like a really smooth ride of like, just like, you know, opportunities and it's like, yeah, I want to do that. And let's go here and I'll go to Bali. And it's just, that sounds amazing. I want to go to your next one when you do it again. But yeah. if you could talk a little bit about, um, you know maybe some challenges or obstacles that kind of like shaped you or things that have come up um, for you. Yeah. Well, in terms of my career, um, you know, it's interesting because I've had people say like, oh, you're just this overnight success. And I'm like, oh my God, so not true. Um, you know, I really, 
I lived so simply. I lived in like, I squatted in my art studios illegally for years. I lived in a van. Like I, I was committed to living really simply so that I could do my art. And so, and not to say like, poor me, because I made those choices and there was romance in there too. You know, it was kind of a fun time. Um, you know, it was like the true starving artist reality for like 10 years at least. Um, but it was, you know, I, I, I gave a lot up, you know, I didn't um, choose to get married. I didn't choose to, at that time, try to have kids, you know, like I was like, I'm giving all of myself to this dream of being a, an artist. And, and so I think that there's, it can be very, um, you know, it can be romanticized what that means. And there is that, but there's also you, you, anytime you're doing anything you're giving something up to to do something else right and so um yeah and then eventually when I did decide to have that I that I wanted to have kids I was like 39 you know and I tried to have you know I did IVF and I just did like the whole fertility thing and you know it didn't work out for me and so I've come to a lot of peace with that um I'm a dog mom, which I love, <laughs> but there is like, you know, there, I just think, you know, that I had a woman come to a retreat one time and she at one point kind of pulled me aside and she, it was really interesting. She was just like, I'm just so jealous of your life. And she was like, actually kind of torn up about it and struggling. And I just, and I knew she had kids and grandkids and this whole, you know, and I just said, you know, like, I get, like, you can admire what you see my life, what you think my life is. Um, but there's a lot that I've had to give up to create this life. And so I just never think that's fair to compare because we don't really know, you know, everybody's story. And, and so that's, you know, the, the, yeah, letting that dream go has been a thing <laughs> that I've had to really work through not, ha not having a family. Um, and then I think, you, you know, I lost my mom, uh, almost six years ago mm -hmm. and that was just, you know, she was one of those like super amazing moms that like nobody could believe when she wasn't here anymore. And so that's been a huge part of my life journey and, um, and, and also a huge part of my learning as I think often the hard things are, you know, we end up getting so much from them as well um were you diving into your art at that time were you like were you using it as that modality to heal yeah I really was thank god I, I remember thinking so many times like what <laughs> what would I be doing if I didn't have painting because it was really where I was able to process mm -hmm. my grief and have a place to put it you know like to move what was stirring and 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 actually get it out of my body in a certain way. Um, and I also do a lot of dance and like kind of while I'm painting. So it was just this whole, you know, very cathartic experience. I would, I would start my paintings uh, often by writing letters to my mom, just like big loopy letters on the canvas that then would just get buried in the layers of paint. And um, yeah, I did a whole, a whole big series and um, these really beautiful, like female angelic forms were showing up, which I just felt, you know, made me feel really connected to her. Um, I think I'll forever be painting paintings that are my mom, <laughs> like mom, mom paintings um, in some way. But, but yeah, I think that's um, one of the biggest gifts of the creative process is that it's, it's a place for us to, um, to feel and to move things through. And it's very forgiving and it's very, uh, it's always there, you know, it's, there's no judgment except if we put it on ourselves. Um, so yeah. So yeah, it's definitely yeah. allowing that space, uh, you know, to, to let it come through. And I love that like, you, you embodied it and you embodied it by like your writing and I, I've seen you paint before. So you like, you, like, you use your fingers and you like really, you know, put yourself into your paintings and that can be very cathartic. Um, yeah. So it's beautiful. That's really beautiful. So can you tell us a little bit more about your principles of creativity and how they fuel you and about your community and more about like living that alive, awakened life? And I'm so curious about that because you said even without paintbrushes, you had mentioned that and when you're talking about your new book a little bit and I was like, well, does she mean just use your fingers or like, what is she? <laughs> <laughs> always use your fingers. Um, 
Yeah, I know it's an it's an interesting sort of leap for me because I've always so heavily used painting as the vehicle, you know, to to gain access to all of these principles. But as I was writing um, my the Art of Aliveness book, um, you know, that's I actually have it right here. So it's a book that has no pictures. <laughs> it's it's just a, a book of words. So it's very different than my other books, which are very much in the art section. You know, they're painting books with pictures of painting and all that stuff. So this is more, um, it's a lot of my personal stories and my philosophies on how it's kind of this two piece thing. It's, it's how our lives can become works of art. Like if we, if we think of it that I'm super obsessed about that idea and all the different ways that's possible, um, in which we can talk about in a moment. And then, and then the other piece is how the creative practices that we do partake in can inform and support our lives. So how we're learning from creativity about living and then how living can become creative, like in a, cre a creative expression. And there's, I think of it sort of as an infinity symbol, you know, as like you're sort of, they both support each other. And so um, I just find that to be really juicy territory. Like I'm really, I'm wanting to have conversations with other creative people right now to hear about how their creative process has helped them learn about life and vice versa. Cause I, I, I have my own experience with that, but I think we probably all have different ways that that's come. Um, so for me, you know, one of the foundational pieces of my um, approach to painting is that I don't have a plan going in. So I'm not trying to execute an idea from my head. I just start with marks and color and I'm open to change, like big change along the way. And I'm, um, I'm allowing myself to be uh, kind of forced into the present moment. You know, it's like you have to be, you have to be in a place of surrender and embracing the mystery if you don't have a plan, right? You have to just, it's like, now what's working? Now what's working? And now what am I interested in? And so that in and of itself is such a juicy metaphor for, for living because while plans can be helpful, of course, we never really know what the future holds. I mean, if we have, if we've learned nothing else from the last year, year, it's like, we really don't know what the future holds. And so creativity teaches us to like, kind of have our knees bent, to be open to change, to be able to, you know, the word pivot, everyone has been saying, it's like, artists are great at that. You know, that's what we have to do, right? Is that we have to be um, responding to what is happening and allowing it to change and become something else. And so I, it's been interesting actually to look around and see the friends I have that are truly so creative are kind of thriving right now in a lot of ways with COVID and everything. It's like they have found their ways to maneuver through all of this. And, and I really think the creative process is like what's been supporting that. Um, so, you know, one of the things I say in painting is commit fully while staying open to change. So that can kind of feel like that always takes a minute for people to sort of understand because what does that mean? You know, commit fully while staying open to change. So it means um, go for it. Don't dabble. Don't, you know, if you're going to do something, do it, like commit to it. But then don't be attached to it having to stay that way or having it to keep going in that direction. And that's something that really helps the painting process. Um, but it also is such a life thing too. It's like, you know, put two feet in, you know, really like when I did my IVF, I was like, okay, this is as two feet in as one can go if you're trying to get pregnant. It's like, I'm going for it here. And I had to be open to it not working, you know, or it working, you know? And so, and so that philosophy is really at the core of my, um, the, the living and the creative practice sort of infinity thing. Um, I also have a, a phrase I often use called work with what's working. 
which comes, it's sort of contrary to what you learn in art school for any of you that went to art school, um, where you're really in a more of a critique mode often, like look for what's not working and then go from there. I realized working with students over the years, especially people that are new to painting, is that if, I think we're, we're, we're naturally, um, we're, we're sort of oriented to look for what's not working, unfortunately. And I think that's just our, you know, that's the air we breathe, you know, that's, that's capitalism, that's everything. It's like, what's wrong with you and what do you need to fix it? <laughs> and so I really try to change that lens, you know, and say, okay, even if you don't like 90% of the painting, can you find one thing that you like? Is it a color, a mark, a little zone, like anything? And then work with like, the, let that be your entry point into what you do next. And there's so much freedom in there. And it's, and it just like, and it, and it allows for more momentum to keep going. And so it's the same in life. You know, it's super easy to go, this isn't working, that's not working, that's not working. It's like, sure, we can all do that all day long. But what if you just looked at your life and, and really said, what is working here? Is it like one relationship that's really awesome? Is it like the way your, you know, I don't know, the way your bed feels? Is that really great? Like, you know, how can you work with what is already working and, and like using those as guide po posts as you move forward? So I love that one. Um, oh, an another one, there's a whole chapter in the book. It's called Contrast is Crucial. And uh, this, among my friends, this has become like a thing that we just randomly say now, like this happened and we're like, yeah, contrast is crucial, you know? And it basically in, in the painting process, anytime there's contrast, it brings a painting to life. Like this one behind me is a great example. It's like light and dark, you know, it could also be warm colors with cool colors or, you know, wild marks with quiet areas. You know, there's, there's a million ways to make contrast happen in a piece of art. And, when, and, and what, what contrast does is that it brings vitality and it, it, brings, it kind of brings it alive, really. And so in life, I think that's something that's always so good to sort of keep in the back of our minds too, is, is if, if we're feeling kind of, you know, whatever it is, bored, apathetic, like nothing's exciting, you know, it's like, how can we actively seek out contrast? How can you shake it up, mix it up, do something different? You know, like what, and there's a million ways to do that, but I think it's, it's the same principle is true that if you, you know, do everything, my friend Lynx calls it midtown. If you just stay in midtown and everything's sort of this size shapes and it's all mid value and it's all, you know, there's just sort of a, like, there's no pop. And so um, I love thinking about contrast in life and just, it's also, you know, speaks to those hard moments when things are really, really hard. You know, and one way to look at that is that you're creating a contrast to when it's gonna be good again. And, and it's only through going into the depths of the grief and the depths of loss and all of those hard things that happen when you're a human. It's like, if you can go there fully and allow yourself to experience that end of the human spectrum of experience, then you're gonna appreciate the hell out of it when things get better, right? And you're gonna have a way to like bounce back to this, this you know, the, the other parts of life. And I, and I really think that it's, um, it's having all of it happen to us that makes us truly alive. You know, it's it, you, to me, the goal of living and the art of aliveness is not about, you know, let's be happy all the time. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's not realistic really. And that, and that, and that also doesn't pay honor to the, the, um, the amazing lessons and things that we get from having hard experiences. I mean, just the compassion alone that we can experience from going through a loss, you know, it's like now I just had a really good friend of mine actually lose a, lose her dad. I mean, prior to myself losing my mom, I wouldn't have even known what to say to her. You know what I mean? And when instead I felt like I just, I could just 
you know, I could just say, I feel like I get your, I get your heart right now. I, I, my heart is with you. And, you know, I could share some of my own experience and just feel like so compassionate. And, it, and that is such a gift. That's a way of connecting to, to humans that I couldn't do before. I had experienced that room of gr grief and that level of loss in my own life. So there's so many gifts there. Um, I think in the book, I talk about, you know, the layers of a painting because my process is very much about building up layers and it's through the layers that the painting, the story of the painting builds and becomes rich and deep and interesting. And, you know, if I were to do a painting in just one layer, not to say it couldn't be a good painting, but there's not going to be that same level of depth that comes from trying this on, going here, getting stuck, breaking through, you know? And so I sort of make that parallel in life. It's like people that have really been through things, which is most of us <laughs> at this point, um, there's a depth that comes from that. And there's a richness and there's a, there's like so much to the story that um, is, it makes it a beautiful thing. And so not to, yeah, not to sh try to be avoiding all the hard stuff. Yeah. Wow, there's so much nuggets of gold there. I love it. I, love it. <laughs> I know it's endless. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I could totally relate with, um, you know, making a painting and get, getting totally lost and thinking that I had a plan starting off, which never, it always, I always end up getting lost in it and then having to problem solve. And that totally relates to life of saying, okay, you know, I, I go into that problem solving mode when I do get lost or like, how do I get, you know, out of that contrast? Um, yeah. It's the same thing. I could definitely see the, the parallel happening. And then I figure it out somehow or another. It might give it some time. Got to come back a few days later, you know, yeah. give it some space and it works itself out. I love that. So uh, one last question before I open it up to, to see if uh, the members have a question. I wanted to know if you could give um, the members or anyone that's kind of like starting out on their journey, some words of wisdom about sharing their gifts with the world. I feel like that's um, something that a lot of maybe the, like artists or, uh, you know, they're trying to like share their gifts, but there's a little bit of hesitation. Um, I'm wondering if you could just maybe give some words of wisdom um, about, you know, just showing up fully. Yeah, totally. Well, I think more than ever, we find ourselves in a time as humans where, you know, it's like all the artists, all the healers, all the helpers, like anyone that has something to share that can uplift and beautify and connect or confront or whatever it is we're doing with our art. Um, it's like, now's the time, you know, the, like thinking of it as, um, as a service, I think is really helpful. Thinking of it as, as your contribution, you know, cause only you can, can share and create in the way that you do you know, if you're, if you're doing it from an authentic place, which is where, you know, obviously that's like what we want to, the place we want to be sharing from. And so that speaks also to just embracing you and who you are and what your story is and, and what your unique set of circumstances and gifts are that are going to inform your creative process. And, and so a lot of that comes from letting go of, you know, trying to make it I don't know. I think there's a trap of looking at too many other people's art and thinking like, oh, I got to do it this way, or I should, you know, if the word should is in there a whole bunch, it's like that I think is um, something to be aware of. And, and just to always come back to like, what is true for me? What am I authentically feeling like, you know, moved by or inspired by? Um, that's why I had to make this big shift in my career because I was getting burnt out on teaching this painting process that I've been teaching for 10 years, I realized, oh, what I'm actually lit up about right now is the, is, is what we've been talking about with the art and the life and all of that. And no, you know, no paintbrush is required. There's a million ways to do it. And so, you know, it's a scary thing to like switch gears when people know you as one thing, but I think as creative people, we have to stay connected to what is alive for us in, in, and it's, it's, it's like a disservice to do anything else. Um, and then, yeah, just to, to remember it's a gift and it's a, 
Oh my gosh. I just feel like we need all the artists and all the healers right now. <laughs> Don't yes, hold back. Everybody needs to show up and be really yes, loud. like fully. <laughs> and to know that there's, you know, there's so we need, I don't know. I always think of, you know, how the natural world, it's like the natural world thrives when there's a lot of d- diversity, you know, diversity of organisms and things. That's how land thrives. And I think with where we're at right now and the massive changes that are happening and the incredible amount of systems that are crumbling and what, I mean, it's a pretty exciting time to be alive, I think. And especially as a creative person, you know, to be able to have the imagination and creativity to even envision something new in the world, a new way of living. It's like, we're the ones that have been practicing that you know, we're good at that. <laughs> and so I think it's, it's time for us to, to bring it forth and to trust that whatever it is, is a contribution. And that the only way that things are really going to shift and change is through that diversity of, of the ways in which people show up. Yeah. So just trusting that yours is a, a piece of that, that we all have a piece of it. Yeah. Definitely. Would you, would it be okay if I ask the members to, uh, and, you know, if they have any questions, do you yeah. have time for that? Okay. I do have time for that. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Does anyone have a question that they would like to ask? I do. <laughs> Is that Rachel? Yes. All right. Let me spotlight you so I can put you on here. Okay, go ahead. Um, You talked about being an intuitive painter. Like, what is that mean really to you like I do intuitive paintings as well and I was just wondering if it was the same <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question I think the the term intuitive painting is super broad you know like I think that for me what it, it means is that we're just we're listening in and we're allowing our intuitive impulses to be the the driving force behind what we're creating I think how that looks can look a million different ways. And so I actually had the experience of co-teaching a little class at one point with two other intuitive painting teachers. And we all got there. Of course, we hadn't talked about what the hell we were even doing. It was very, very intuitive. (laughs) And we realized in, in kind of in real time that our philosophies in a lot of ways were entirely different. And, um, and it was, but it was really cool. So it, like in, in front of, like, I think we were like filming it. It was a live thing. And we were just like, wow, that's actually totally different than like how I think of that thing in intuitive painting. And so I think what, what it proved is that like, there's no one way and thank God it kind of goes back to that diversity thing we were just talking about is that, yeah, there's so many different ways to do it. And, and as long as it feels true to you, then, then I think it's intuitive painting. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can anyone else have a question? I do. Jocelyn, all right. Go ahead. So I'm, I'm an art therapist. I'm curious, did you ever think about becoming an art therapist? Um, there was a time when I graduated with a BFA and then I was looking to grad school you know, possibilities that I thought maybe I should do the art therapy route, but I was so in my paint, I'm trying to be a painter mode at that point that I just decided to, well, I actually, I applied to try to go to some MFA programs, didn't get into any of them. And then I just went full forward into just painting myself. Um, it's interesting though, because what I ended up, I, I think of myself as an art therapist in a yeah, lot you of ways. Yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, I don't have the, the you know, credentials, um, but I have been such a seeker my whole life. I've gone through so many different, honestly, trainings of sort of tran- transformational practices, somatic experiencing, and, you know, lots of different, like, threads that have come in um, that are very much in the therapy world. Um, at this point, I, yeah, I don't think that I would do that just because I've I think there's, you can probably relate to this. Like there's a certain amount of freedom that you get when you don't have those letters behind your name too. It's like, I'm kind of just out here like renegade style, like doing my thing. Um, But yeah, I I get a lot of art therapists that come to my workshops and things to sort of fill their own baskets with with new ideas. Um, Yeah, so I, 
Yeah. Well, I, I use um, in your first book, I think it's your first book, your bio. I use it all the time with clients. I talk about it with how, you know, the blank canvas, it's like a metaphor for life, right? Like it's hard and we go through it. And it's just, if we can work through our discomfort and creating art, then we can work through things in the real world, right? And um, I think I'm feeling super burnt out in my practice right now. And I think, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this because it's all online and I miss like yeah. pulling out all my art supplies. Cause I thought people would just do art from home and they, they don't always do it when I'm like, okay, let's paint and talk about what's going on. But um, I don't know. So I'm excited to get this vaccine, get my patients or my clients vaccinated and get back into the studio and yes. start creating. It's yeah. coming. It's yeah, coming. I know. We're close I know. I've been trying to just figure out, especially with the new book and things where I'm like, you don't need paint. You know, it's not about painting necessarily. That's right. forcing me to come up with all of these other exercises that um, are maybe a little more doable for people where it's just like, all you need is a pen and a paper. Right, right, you right. Because I think that's part of it. That's part of the thing with painting is that it does, it's like, oh God, painting, it's messy. There's paints, like brushes, all the things. And then people don't end up doing it. And so I'm just like, how simple can we go here? You know, like, how can we make this like almost effortless for people? So I'm, I'm like, figure, trying to figure that out right now. <laughs> I love that. Well, I can't wait to get your new book. Thank you. Well, thank you. Oh, awesome. Anyone else have a question? So quiet. <laughs> All right. Now's your time. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, I'll have a question. Okay. So you were talking about to work with what's working. So if you have a painting because I, I'm focused on what's not working. <laughs> so do you ever like go from what's working and then also go with what isn't? Or do you just go with what's working? So I just wanted to know how you work through that. Yeah, that's a great question. There's definitely a time in my process where looking for what's not working is really helpful. Um, but it's not in the beginning half of the process, I would say. Because I think when we when we get that critical lens going too soon it just it like gets in the way of freedom and our ability to just do weird stuff and play and experiment and and be, and that's usually where where the most more interesting things come from is when we're in, when you're in that space however when i get to a point where i'm like okay this painting's kind of coming together I'm sort of like, I know which way is up. I'm not going to, you know, make any drastic moves. Um, then I put on my like, okay, editing What's eyes. I think of it, you know, what, what, what am I willing to let go of? What's not working? All of that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's a time for it, for sure. It's, it's more of a, ref, like a refining, you know, I think of it, you know, yes. I've been writing so much lately that it, there's so many parallels with writing too, like, you know, right. It, when you're starting writing, you just want to get it out. You just want to like free, just free write. And like, without that critical editing mind in the way, you know, you want to get your ideas out because if you get critical too soon, then you're going to stop the flow of what, what might want to come. And, but then there's a time definitely to go back and be like, okay, I'm going to, uh, okay. you know, change this. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So I'm curious, what is the best way to connect with you and, and purchase your book? And so that everyone can kind of see, are you still doing courses like online, even though you have a new way of going? Yeah. 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 I have a lot of courses. Um, I don't have like an art of aliveness course yet. I'm definitely, what I just did, my most recent course was um, a, a virtual painting retreat called Reunite, um, which is a, a it was kind of my last hurrah with the painting thing. I'm like, if you want to learn to paint with me, this is the thing. Cause we, we filmed, um, a five day painting retreat that I taught in the before times when we were still gathering. And so I was able to edit this whole experience and create a virtual program with it. So that was a really cool thing that people enjoyed. Um, and then I've got, yeah, I've got like five or six e-courses that are all still there. Um, in terms of the book, 
Yeah, we're, I just had a meeting with my assistant. I'm going to start selling them on my own website, um, signed in the next couple of days, but currently they're on like Amazon or Barnes and anywhere really that sells books. Um, it, oh, good. Okay. So I wouldn't get one. I, I got the digital version, but now that I think about it, I think I'd rather hold it uh, <laughs> so I'll order the one that's signed. <laughs> nice to hold the pages. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, as far as sharing, I, I share on Instagram quite a bit. That's sort of my favorite, I guess. Not that it's really a favorite thing, but <laughs> in terms of social media, that's where I am the most often. And it, I'm just my name, Flora Boley there. My website's floraboley.com. Awesome. Well, thank you from my heart. I am so grateful that you came today and shared your wisdom with us. I know that everybody is feeling very nurtured right now and inspired and all the good stuff. And they're all shaking their head. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you for having me. I, I, I honor your time and I hope that this was useful and um, thanks for having me. Yay. So I'm excited to see what's next. Yeah, Beautiful. new things <laughs> for everybody, right? <laughs> yes. Well, we'll see you again. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Have a great Bye. day. Bye-bye.